Hello everyone and welcome back for a brand new series of Gloomhaven that we're going to be running on the channel. Uh, we're going to be going through Guildmaster mode this time, having done the campaign mode previously. Uh, there is going to be some differences between this and the original board game. We're likely to have a much larger roster at any one time. Uh, but it should be a good opportunity for us to have a good look at the different characters and compare them and also explore these hundred new missions and uh, the different mechanics that it introduces. So without further ado, let's uh, let's jump in. Uh, we're going to be running on normal difficulty and I think it's... <clears throat> I'm torn between these two. Shared gold makes things a lot easier for us to be able to demonstrate stuff and move stuff around. Split gold is like the original feeling of Gloomhaven. As this is a Guildmaster mode, which obviously wasn't in the original board game, I'm going to go with shared gold. Um, I think it's recommended for this uh, this difficulty. But uh, yeah, it's a tough call. It's definitely a tough call. Oh, we need a guild name. Uh, has been heroes. That seems like a good one. Okay. Uh, we get to pick house rules, uh, so you can either switch the times two and times zero for plus two and minus two. I like the original, honestly. I I understand the variant is like quite popular in some circumstances. Getting rid of the times zero means at least you're going to do something, even if it's um, significantly reduced. Uh, but this is uh, this is what I love. Uh, ooh, can't roll into a non-modifier with an advantage. Mmm, that's an interesting house rule. I do prefer... I like the original feel, but this variant is a very tempting one. That's uh, if you've got advantage, like being able to like pull a different thing out. If you get a time zero on anything, it's really frustrating because you're like, oh, I was supposed to have advantage in this, and, and then you lose that still but I think the whole point of the time zero is, is to add that fear is to add the trepidation of it um line of sight uh, we'll go for the center hex one variant uh summons movement Ooh, if there are no enemies or no valid path to a hex the mercenary someone could choose whether they will move towards that mercenary or will not move yeah we'll keep that variant uh, spawn monster gold drops spawn monsters do not drop gold yeah otherwise it's way too easy to build up money let's push on in uh, yeah we don't have any DLCs for this unfortunately um, but at the same time uh, let's uh, let's go for the story intro uh, you should still be able to have good fun with the game itself now I want to focus on two key parts maybe three key parts as I'm going through doing these so before each mission I want to have a little chat about what my tactical planning is going to be for it, what the the anticipation is. Uh, and then during the mission, obviously going to be uh, talking about how things go and reviewing it afterwards. Um, but also I might like uh, do some spotlights on the different mercenaries and different ways you can build them. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. We're going to go with the story intro. Don't need the tutorial uh, because we know the mechanics. Um, so at least the initial story and puzzle quests will take us in rather than completely missing the introduction. All right, great work getting through the basic training missions. Yeah, we totally skipped them. Uh, allow me to introduce you to the third member of the guild. He ain't much of a fighter though. Hey, not all of us particularly care to be experts at stabbing people. Uh, oh, please excuse me. Greetings, Guildmaster. I'm the humble merchant of your fledgling guild. I deal with the important aspects of running a guild. In other words, money, which I might add is sorely lacking at the moment. What I can see right now in the world map, you've probably noticed it looks a bit barren at the moment. And well, I've got some good news and some bad news. The bad news is the realm has been overrun with all manner of unpleasant monsters. Rogue bandits, wandering undead, dark cultists, you name it. The good news is you're going to help us restore the roots back to other settlements out there, hidden in the fog. Before we can do anything about that, we need to get some mercenaries on the guild roster. Let's start with actually recruiting the poor old brute who's got himself into a spot of bother. Okay, so we have one mission available to us, which is to recruit the brute. Let's head on through. The trainer tells you to head to the Demon's Gate graveyard, and there you find a mausoleum with a smashed-in front door. Walking down the steps into the gloom below, 
You follow a trail of broken bones until you hear the sounds of battle. Entering a chamber, the badly wounded brute is facing off against a number of undead. Well, this is going to unlock the brute. We're going up against skeletons, living bones. So let's take it in. Okay, now this is the point where I would normally talk about the strategy that we would do on the mission. In this case, we are kind of being directed to do stuff, so it's going to be a bit less relevant. Um, but it's still important to pay attention to uh, to our environment. So we've got two traps here. Potentially we could push this guy back through them. Uh, and uh, this one is already wounded, so maybe we'll end up finishing him off first. As the trainer says, let's begin looking more closely at what each individual character can do. In this scenario, the brute has two level 1 Limb bone elites to deal with, which means their stats will be greater than their level zero counterparts. Monster stats are combined with a base ability card, resulting in what you see when the cards are revealed. So expect them to move a bit further and attack a bit harder, especially as they're elite. Note, however, they both have an innate shield one ability. Each point of shield prevents one damage from incoming attacks, however, an amount of shield can be ignored if targeted with Pierce on an attack. I have it on good authority that these living bones are going to attack more than once each this turn. You are low on cards, so won't be able to afford to burn any cards, so surviving here will require some shielding of your own. By the way, while these enemy shields are innate persistent effect, normally active bone eye granting abilities such as shield are accompanied by a round or persistent icon so you can tell how long they're going to last. Your objectives are kill a living bones using a piercing attack, apply some shield, use a minor healing potion that will do for this round so this is still technically training um well we we're going to want to move quickly we're going to want to apply shield to ourselves. so let's do the 15 and we'll use the bottom part of shield bash to apply our own shielding and then we can use the top part of trample attack three pierce two that will get through this guy's shield and kill him and then we just need to tank tank what that guy's putting out. Oh, we're going to have the healing potion as well. That'll help. We are moving faster than the living bones. So let's do the healing potion before I forget. We'll do the shield. And then we'll get the trample on you. Pretty good. Hey! Right, we're gonna use the shield to help mitigate some of the damage. And he's hitting us again, we'll just receive that one. And then hitting us again, we'll just receive that one. Painful, but we're still alive. Yikes, that was quite the onslaught. Nonetheless, your shield prevented enough damage to keep the brute alive. Phew! Final objective, kill the remaining living bones. Good luck, he's a tanky one. Perhaps you could use the old push and trap combo. Yeah, that's what we mentioned before. Note that the shield only prevents damage from attacks, doesn't do anything to traps. So we're going to want a short rest. So we can get some cards back. Uh, yeah, we'll lose trample. So we want to be able to shove him. That one will do. Warding strength. So if we go for shield bash and warding strength... We can push him all the way back over here. That gets him killed, and then we can use this movement to go and grab some of the gold at least. Hey, we got some money! Save the brute yet again! I hear he's decided that adventuring alone is not working out for him, so he's agreed to be the first mercenary of the guild. Let's get out of this dusty crypt and see who else we can recruit. So that's pretty much going to be the uh, the pattern of it. We're going to do a few more of these until we get into the rhythm, um, but we'll be talking about stuff as we go. So the brute can soak up damage well, but he's not the most mobile. Having ample funds is going to be of utmost importance in getting the guild off the ground. Do you know anyone good at gold acquisition? Oh, I know just the woman. She's also a dab hand at poking holes in those who get in her way. 
She's in the process of liberating some gold right now. Shall we lend her a hand? I think that's a good plan. Let's go get the scoundrel. The train appoints you in the direction of a ruined crypt on the outskirts of town. Dead bandits litter the area, many with knives still embedded in their corpses. It's clear they didn't see their attacker coming. Okay, meet the scoundrel. She's incredibly nimble and mobile, not to mention able to combo off a huge amount of melee damage when things line up just right. Let's help her out of this sticky situation. This is a bit sticky actually, so we've got a trap behind us. We've got two, we've got three injured and four piles of gold. So really we want to grab everything we can. So we need to kill three archers before, before they attack. We'll need something that can uh, hit more than one target at a time. And ideally we'd want to do more than that. So throwing knives, target two. And we could potentially, yeah, if we go with throwing knives and smoke bomb, we can pull this one onto the trap. Given we need to get them killed, I think that is the smart choice. And they are moving quite quickly, but we are faster. So that's going to be you and you. And I would really love to be able to just ignore this one and go after the money, but I suspect we're set up to get injured and die or fail. Yeah, we would fail if we didn't do this. So pull you onto the trap. Feels good picking off multiple targets, doesn't it? One last objective, loot at least five piles of gold this round. Okay. We'll definitely be able to do that. Loot ability to pick up all the gold within the radius specified. So work out where you need to stand. Uh, so we're going to do a short rest so we can get cards back. Sure. Ooh. Move to loot every hex you enter with this action. Hypothetically, we'd still have quick hands. And we could just use throwing knives. So losing swift bow is fine. So yeah. Throwing knives and quick hands will do well. Okay, the loot two is only going to go this far, so we need to move in closer. We can move one space closer. And if we move one space closer, we'll be able to get all of those. Not that one, though. If we go to there, we'll be able to get that one, but not that one. And if we go to there, we can't get this one. So we're going to have to just choose between them. Uh, let's pick this one and we'll go here, should be fine. It's a real shame that one's not just a little bit closer. Skip the attack, loot to grab everything that we can fit, which is almost everything but not quite. Nice. Let me just uh, take care of that gold for you. For your assistance in this scenario, the scoundrel has agreed to join the cult. It really doesn't take much, does it? That means we've got enough mercenaries now for a proper mission. Okay, the first thing we should do as a guild is re-establish the trade route with Gibbet Hall to the west. We've been having a small problem with bandits in the woodland en route, but with the brute and the scoundrel to assist, that's nothing that should cause you any trouble. It'll give you some much needed experience on the job and allow me to get some new items in stock once the way is cleared. Go and knock some bandit heads together. Well, that does seem to be the right move. Let's head on in and unlock Gibbet Hill. The road is deserted as you make your way towards Gibbet Hill. 
Trading in the area has effectively stopped for many months now, with so few daring to venture along the main highways. As you make your way along the trail, wending its way through a wooded grove, the crack of a twig snapping underfoot pierces the silence. You hear rustling in the undergrowth getting louder as its source makes its way towards you. So we're going to be going up against bandit archers and bandit guards. Right, this is your first proper fight. Looks like two clearings with a couple of bandits in each. So we've got one clearing here and then we have a door going through to a second one on the far side. Just remember what I've taught you and don't enter the second clearing until you're ready. You can change your character's starting positions by clicking the white hexes. Choose a formation that suits you for the first turn. If you're struggling to make out objectives and enemies, you can press to highlight them. And also see the turn order in the same way. Okay. They'll all get the same initiative from the card drawn for their class, but the actual order per monster on that class's turn is determined by their ID numbers. Right, yeah. So same rules as previously. So we definitely want the brute to be far, far I think we kind of want everyone to be far forwards, actually. So in terms of strategy for this, uh, we need to kill everyone in here and then kill everyone in here we don't know how many people are in this one getting these two killed quickly would be good getting that trap out the way would be good trap is two guaranteed damage so pulling the archer onto this would be quite nice or pushing that one back so who has pull the scoundrel We know there's a pull on the bottom, but that means we can't move unless we use something on the top. Which is not the worst idea. Quick hands will get us moving on the top. So we could do smoke bomb and quick hands. That would get us moving in two. One, two is not close enough to actually be able to attack. And smoke bomb has only got range of three. One, two, three. That's not enough. So this is not a plan we want. So instead, let's look at moving in further. One, two, three, four. Moving four would be good. Potentially doing the disarming as well. Doing a throwing knife on each of them would be quite good, because that would uh... actually that's a it's not a bad plan. But backstab is attack three, plus two attack and gain an experience when the target is adjacent to none of its allies. So this is really one that we could use for taking down a big thing. Kind of want to use it here, but at the same time, we burn the card if we do that. So this is why it's important for us to analyze the opening move as much as anything else. And the Venom Ship giving poison would mean that this guy dies, but he gets to act. I think it might be... We could use Flanking Strike to kill him if we can get the Brute moving quickly enough. So let's let's think about quick moving Brute related stuff. Can we do any pulling? We could do Spare Dagger to attack at range. We could also push, which would be a bit of a waste killing this guy with a push. I think we're going to use grab and go one, two, three, four. And something to attack at range. Shield Bash would be really good for that experience, though. It's 
spare dagger would be nice, but it wouldn't kill him. Yeah, I... Th I think actually moving in and just doing balanced measure might be the best best plan. Skewer would let us move six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we do a skewer and then a balanced measure. We're moving a bit slow, but we could kill the guy at the back. So that means we're not going to be doing a flanking strike to kill. We would need something else to kill. A backstab would be fine. A backstab would be fine. It means we're burning a card before we get through to the next room, but... It doesn't matter if we move a little bit slower after this. One, two... We only really need to move three. Special mixture would be fine as well. So backstab gets us... Uh, moving quickly. Special mixture moving one, two, three. Except we'll go on this side so we don't block the way. Although you don't, you don't block the way for your unit, so whichever side we go is going to be fine. We'll go on this side. Yeah, okay. That's the plan. So, the scoundrel is going to move in pretty quickly. Eliminate this one completely with the backstab. We're going to get a little bit of experience, but we are burning a card. It's a bit risky, but I think it's fine for us to do that. The brute is going to move slower and is just going to completely eliminate the one at the back. And then we'll move up next turn, ready to move through the doorway. Okay, Archer's going to move and create a trap, which is interesting. So, let's move in. One, two, three. May as well put the poison on. It means that he's taking more damage, so we probably could have gotten away without doing a backstab, but... The extra experience is nice. Here comes the Bandit Archer. You're moving in and putting a trap over there. That's fine. Now, skewer is... Ooh. If we don't do skewer, one, two, three, four... Yeah, it's not going to be quite close enough. I wouldn't normally like burning this many cards. But this is very efficient. So skip the extra movement. Nicely done. Okay, we want to at least get rid of uh, one of the traps. So Thieves Knack will do that, and anything else to move in, which could be Venom Shiv. Or Swift Bow. That's uh, Swift Bow. Swift Bow to move through... Thieves Knack to disarm the trap. Uh, which means we can move the Brute into there and do some looting. Do we have anything that's loot one? Let's check the top. There's a loot one at the top. Okay, grab and go. So, let's use Trample for the regular movement. And then grab and go afterwards. That's a bit of looting. And then disarm that trap. A bit of experience. Step on in over here. And then grab and go. Get all that gold. We do have shared gold, so that's all fine. Okay. We could rest or 
we can just barrel on in. And I think barreling on in is a pretty good plan. Spare Dagger's got good range. And Overwhelming Assault would allow us to kind of push people around in there should we need it. So we want to go after 27. Venom Shift gives us a decent amount of movement and then throwing knives to attack. I like that as a combination. Okay, open the door. So there are more mobs. There's plenty of loot at the end. We can increase our move with the Boots of Striding, which will get us a bit further. What are these guys going to do? They're going to move three and attack one. One, two, three, and then attack one. So we could actually come down to this corner and only face this guy. Uh, skip the push as well. Take a shot at this guy. Bit of gold. Bandit guards move in. There's the shield. Now for the scoundrel. We're going to get as far around as we can. Doing a ranged thing in close quarters is never fun. <laughs> that's gone well. And that's gone all right. Okay, scoundrel, I need you to move quickly. And then grab all that loot at the end. I think we want to move in quickly and kill this guy as well. Ooh. The question is, do we try and get any of the other gold? I don't think we really can, but that's fine. So unless unless he moves super 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 fast, we should be we should be good. Just in case, we'll we'll take the really long movement. Yeah, he's moving slowly enough. Okay. Fast movement. Oh no, the loot is on the bottom. I have mistargeted that. Okay. Well, we could we could come down here and We'll do the loot one on that and then and then attack him to kill him and then just move the brood across and pick that up. It's fine, it just means we're not getting some of the gold. Yeah, let's kill this guy and then we'll do the loot to pick up what there is because we'll get both of these. And at the very least... It's a bit of money. So not the not the most economical, but it certainly worked. And there is our reward, unlocking Gibbet Hill. Ah, the joyous sounds of gold coins in the pocket. But what to invest in? Perhaps I should get some minor mana potions back in stock. About time you learned about the fundamentals of magic. I know a spellweaver who should be able to show you a thing or two. And last I heard from her, she was researching a stone circle in a forest near Gibbet Hill. With all these monsters about, we ought to check she's okay. Alright, well, that does take us to about half an hour in. So I think this is probably a good point for us to finish this episode off. Obviously still very early days, we've only got two people at the moment, but we are going to recruit more into the guild in short time. Thank you very much for coming along everyone. I do hope you have enjoyed this. As always, if you have, be sure to give a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do so and you'll be told when the next episode goes live. 
Otherwise, I'll see you next time for some more Gloomhaven Guildmaster. See you soon.